Welcome to the Palladium here in Champrix, Switzerland. We're here with the Curling Masters from Champrix World Curling Tour coverage. And we're into quarterfinal action. Saturday evening, Team Marburg, Team Pfister is our feature game. Johannes Patz, Vincent Stenberg, Frederick Niemann, Patrick Marburg's on the Swedish team. Pfister, we have Simon Gempler, Raphael Merki, Enrico Pfister, and Marco F Mark Pfister for the Swiss. We're down to the final eight, 24 teams. Started out on Thursday afternoon. And we're down to the final eight. And here we see how they finished up in the ranking. And uh, Brewster, Edin, Mauberts, Drummond, Mollet, Mr. Staley, and uh, Van Dorp. And we're playing one against eight, two, seven, three, uh, three six, four, five. And uh, we'll show you the playoff grouping coming up. And here we are. And we have picked Mauberg Fister as our feature game. And they will take on whoever wins between the number one seed, Edin, and Team Staley from Switzerland. My name is Armin Harder, and I'm here this evening with Brad Askew. Hello, Brad. Hi, Armin. Good Brad. to be here. Thanks for joining us. Brad is the national c coach for the Czech Republic, also had a team playing here. And here we see the lineup, Mark Fister, Enrico Fister, Ruffish, uh, Merki, and Simon Gempler. Then I'll let you do the. We've plates. got Patrick <laughs> Mauberg, we've got Frederick Newman, we've got Vincent Stenberg, and we've got Johannes Paz. Put you on the spot there right <laughs> at the start, just see and make sure you're awake. Make sure I'm paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and Simon, Simon Gempler getting underway here, of course. Uh, Mauberg's finishing higher ranked as the hammer here in the quarterfinals. And we saw the other quarterfinals. We've got uh, Edin Staley out there. Edin finishing in second place. Van Dorp and Brewster going at it. And Mott Drummond. So three Scottish teams, two Swedish teams, team Swiss teams, and the lone Dutch team. Did I miss anybody? No, I think that's everyone. So, Brad? It's off to a nice aggressive start here. Top four and clear, so this could be a quick first end. Get Teams get used to the ice. Um... Fister played in Group D. And yep. Yep. Malberg's was in Group C. Group C. Yes. Okay. Hit and roll out. So that's cleared the house. So 2014 started this competition, and we're down to the final eight. Forty-five thousand Swiss francs on the line. That's almost sixty thousand Canadian. For those viewing in Canada, uh, nine, 14,000 to the first prize, nine to the second. Nice little payday if you win this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth a trip to Champry. Well, it's always a trip to worth a trip to Champry here in Port Salate. It's a lovely place. Really nice. So, Brad, we got lots to talk about this game too. During this game, besides covering. The game. Uh, you can tell us a little bit later on about how how your competition went with your team. Of course, the big and most interesting part, uh, besides this, you know, the competition for the first prize here and all important World Tour points, is also seven of the eight teams uh, preparing for the Olympic yep. qualifier event which is going to take place in the Czech Republic coming up later in December. You can 
to Watch us you know, as much as you know later on about that also. Yeah, we've got seven of the eight here. China's the only one missing. Yeah, which is a, uh, that's pretty good actually. Mm -hmm. And not to mention a lot of uh, European championship qualifiers here this week. And Olympic qualifiers direct, I guess, uh, Edin, anybody else? Uh, no, Scott, no, I think they're the only direct qualifiers. The only direct yep. qualifier present playing, so there's eight, yeah, they, eight that are already qualified. Pretty wide open end so far. Yeah, the teams are just testing out the ice here before they take on anything too aggressive. So I know the Fister team very well. I haven't seen too much of this. I know the Marburgs team a little bit better. I've known Patrick since okay, he came up through good. juniors. Right, and well. uh, in fact, Johannes, their lead oh. was in Prague just a couple of weeks ago for the Colibers Cup. He subbed in on another Swedish team. Okay. Here we see Rafi Mackey. I know the Fister team quite well, yeah. and so this will work out just fine. Okay, <laughs> the teams are just testing out the ice here, having a look to see how fast they're playing, how much the ice is going to swing. Stone's moving around from the center to the side, so this will give them a good idea how the ice is moving. Ice has been a little bit challenging this weekend. It's a little bit frosty on the sheets. Uh, there's a bit of humidity in the air. So the teams will be looking to see how the different parts of the ice are playing. Of course, during the round robin play, the scrapes are happening every second game. Now that we're into playoffs, the scrapes are happening every game. So mm -hmm. the conditions should be a little more consistent. I believe in frost should probably not be a big factor anymore during the playoff games yeah no this will help with the scrapes happening every every sessions teams will still be just testing out here this is going to be a pretty quick end teams are just getting their hitting the weights and swing down then probably be needing a lot of those later in the game it's another one a little wide and rolls out so Sweden will get the choice of where they want to play. They're going to play off to the side and hope for a miss. The Swedes were joking before the game that they were going to play in English, so it would help us out up here, but they've forgotten that already by Stone 6. <laughs> They're well, straight back to Swedish. A big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to speak in a foreign language now, isn't it? Well, funny, we were talking about this earlier up on the bench. So many teams switch to English when they're calling. You hear them talking and chatting in their own language, then when it comes to calling the hurry hard, go well, we hard. We even hear the Chinese and the Russians yep, doing that, don't certainly, we? Certainly, yep. So we've seen how the center of the sheet's playing, we've seen how the right sheet's playing, now we're seeing how the left sheet's playing. For those of you watching at home, this is Vincent Stenberg, who's sweeping at the moment. Don't be fooled by the name on his back. He's borrowed a shirt. So <laughs> if you think we've, we're not paying attention and we're calling the wrong name, it's not our fault, it's his. These poor curlers. I know, honestly. Okay. As he's put his jack, oh, he's, now he's fooled us again. His shirt says Pats, but his jacket says Stenberg. <laughs> So keep up. <laughs> uh, I don't imagine that jacket's going to be on you too long. You know, it long won't no. be. It's it's cold on the bench, but it's pretty warm when you get sweeping. The organizers have thoughtfully made sure that the coaches have got nice blankets to roll up. So if you see jackets 
above the waist and if you could see below the coach's bench everybody's wrapped up nicely in, in blankets to stay warm. So this is heading quickly for a blank end, and thus there's a miss. Okay, Switzerland are going to want to hit this and keep a stone in play because they'll hope that Sweden will come down and try to clear it and jam. Lose the hammer with only one point on the board. So Switzerland don't want to hit and roll out with this because it will allow Sweden to just throw the last stone away and maintain the hammer. Mark Fister with his last rock here in the first end. Okay, so Sweden now want to pick this out. We're going to have a look at Tommy Lips, who's oh. coaching the Swiss teams, national coach. Last year, still with the Germans. Tommy, of course, being Swiss. Happy to be at home coaching his own countrymen. Oh, he missed it. The sweepers were back off that, hoping it would swing. That's a big miss, so. They'll steal a one for the Swiss team here in the first end, and that gives them a one nothing lead here at the Champre Masters from yes. Champre, Switzerland. That's a hard one to take because you've been hitting through the whole end. You think you know how everything's swinging and then you pop that one straight past and leave one on the board. The other thing is if you over curl and nose it and get stuck with one yourself. So they won't be happy with that, but it's only one. Doesn't uh, do much for your self-confidence no. either, I would think. No, and you only you throw the big weight at it. You just have to touch the stone at that weight. So it's frustrating when it doesn't. Yeah, we're beginning the second end. Of course, the show. Fister yeah. taking a point there. We'll start the second yeah. end. And Simon Gempler sets his rock into motion. Top four, so we're looking to put a guard. <coughs> so, oh. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that even hurt me. <laughs> what did you do? I went to adjust the mic and accidentally hit it with my ring. Get the big bling on there. Yeah. So th this is going to be a more aggressive end. Sweden are putting up a corner guard. They're going to take this on now. So I've got no head-to-head -head record between these two teams, so that's interesting. I guess they haven't faced each other in past competitions. Of course, Malberg team being very young. Yeah, this. I just generally, I would say this season, Fister's been slightly more successful. 
So they tend to have made a few playoffs, and Marburg's has just been playing below mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. this is a good result for them this weekend. First, uh, okay, they want to line this stone up. You know, they didn't qualify or any of their past events this season. Yeah, they're a team oh, that we team. see at, at the events. They just, this is this is a really good finish for them this weekend. They're usually just below the playoffs. So they're going to bring this stone down and try to get a freeze on the stone on the top four. Nope, just caught. A little bit too light. Okay, so Switzerland are now going to try to hit and roll in. Uh, here you see the stone coming down. They're working it hard, but it's just going to overcurl. Just a bit too light to get by that guard. Okay, so we're looking for a little hit and roll underneath here. Ends up taking out his own sister. This team represented Switzerland in Halifax at the World Championships. <coughs> Minus Simon Gempler, who played with another team. I'm not sure if he was inside with that or it was a little bit lighter than they were asking for. Well, with, that new, with the big scrape here, it might be curling a yeah. little more than what they've uh, what they've found in the last game. Maybe they just under ice that. Come on, Go, 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 go. Yeah. Trying to come down here. Again, another stone catching the guard. I think there's a bit more swing than they're anticipating here. As you say, a fresh oh. scrape has really brought the ice to life. Sani! It's also cooled down a little bit more outside. It's not as hot as it was a couple day or so ago. Certainly help the conditions in here. Come noon, we do not miss all. Nooney. They were just checking to see if, a, if there was a chance of coming off underneath that top yellow stone, but there isn't, so I think they're going to roll over to the red. A little more weight coming down with this one. They'll be trying the double. Kempi! No, straight nose hit. Malberg's Red Rocks have the hammer in this end. Don't think that one was a biter. It's hard to see because the camera's right over the center of the sheet, so it's an optical illusion whether it's actually on the rings or not. Looks like a biter, huh? Yep. From this angle, it looks oh, off, but actually, as the camera passed by, it looked like it was just biting. Yeah. I'm guessing it won't be in a f about 30 seconds. But he's taking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he's <laughs> taking that one first, I would think, because if he, I hope so, because uh, he's going after the other one. He may just jam it on his yeah. own. Yeah, he's coming on an out turn on this one. Yeah. Big weight. Come on. Yeah, the curl there earlier you know, gets on the inside of it or the outside of it. 
So I don't know. They're either. I think they're probably under icing themselves at the moment. Just have been in the finals a couple of times here in Champry in the last years. Always does well up here. Yeah, it's interesting how some teams seem to really settle into some ice conditions and some events. There's there's team there's events that you think you're going to go and you you know each year you you have a really good run. Um, Fister, you say, has had a really good record at this event. Yep. You get your favorites, you feel comfortable or whatever. Hand off. Hand off. Hand off. Hand off. Hand off. This one's a little warm. Yeah. That's good, sorry. Legs. Tip top. Good. Second shot at the back of the house. I am a no pass. So what's he looking at here now? Okay. This is a challenging shot. He's looking for a run back double. And if you can keep his shooter there, he's sitting too. They haven't quite got the line in weight right yet this end, so this is going to be a challenging shot, but a great one if he makes it. A little more. Yeah. Oh. Frederick Neiman eyeing this up. Okay, yeah. sweepers are on it already. Yeah. Oh, he makes Great it. shot. Really nice. Yep. Great shot. Does leave a double, but it's a pretty good shot there. The yellows were starting to build up in the rings, so they'll be glad to see the back of those. Yeah, well held by the sweepers. Great, perfect angle. Oh, yeah. Mariko Fister will be trying the same. Oh, he didn't get it. A little bit angry. Oh, look, what a roll. Yeah. What a roll under a staggered front two stones. And we can see here that's pretty well fully covered. There's a really nice finish on this ice. Okay. Even if the stones are in the front of the house, you can get fully buried underneath. So all the options are here, whether they want to freeze on top of it. Om vi är lite kort, är vi lite breda så är vi släpper en kort bara så har de inte dubben ändå. Nej. Somewhere in there was double. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly doesn't want to be too wide, but I think with the, the curl yeah. and the finish here, mm -hmm. that should be able to get to the top of the red one. He sh he, with this, with the stones sitting as they are at the front, he could actually get to the inside of that. There's going to be a big finish after this gets past those two yellows. On and off, yeah. sweeping for line, calling for line, it's moving now. Okay. Just got to get by and there's a big finish here. Nice shot. Mm, really good. Yeah, nice shot. So it leaves an edge of the top red, but if... Switzerland go after it, it would go over, probably go over the top. They can play a nice tap weight here if they want to move that back. They're having a look. Yeah, that's there, behind us, it's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. 
see back line. Simon yep. Gempler, the Black lead dog, uh, in the house for so. Team Fister. Nice Dude, that was a good hat clang, Nico. Yeah. So. Das ist gut. Ein bisschen weniger. Weißt du, wir sind sicher am Vorderen hängen. Ja, du musst schon knapp dabei. Ich weiß es nicht. Woher? Ich kleide dich einfach raus weg. Okay, so they're looking at coming come around the other side. They'll have to be ready with this one for sweep for weight in line because we've been playing down the other way with that last shot. He's coming down to have another look. Probably looked a little bit different from the hack than it does from the house. He's trying to raise that yeah. second yellow one onto I the red, but I, I don't know if that's there. I I think it's going to go, if, if anything, it might touch the top of the red and push it back, but I think the angle's pretty steep. I think he's just as soon <laughs> move those yellows around a bit so he maybe has something with his last rock. I think that's what he came down to have a look. Sitting in the hack, I think he realized he could see less of it than he thought he could. You'd have to be pretty thin on that guard, which is going to be tough if the ice is swinging. Sweepers are on and off it. That's always a good sign. It means it's really, really close. That turns out pretty good. That's not too bad. He moved them back. He got very close to that guard, which is what they needed to do. Any wider, and it would have come across the top, or either just maybe even moved the red back a little bit. But he's got them both behind the T line now. We're back at the T line. It's okay to go down there too. So, near so. I see you're not held up to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, can you hear me? No, can you hear me? Okay. So we had after the round robin play, we had eight teams qualified for three spots or are tied for three spots. The, uh, the top five going through with a at least a four win record. And then from about the sixth place, not tied for sixth place, eight teams coming down to. The draw shot. I think it's great the way the game's developed over the last couple of years at this draw shot. It's a test of skill to take your team through to the playoffs. More and more important, the draw shot determines the hammer and determines your final ranking. So it's something that they really need to focus on. Normal. We can even peta out in this. So just for an idea, Fister, who was the first place, the first team to place uh, with a draw shot, ended up with a 7.6. And Staley, 14, found up with 18. And there was no team over 100. Yep. And again, we're talking about centimeters here, make the difference between making the playoffs and going home early. So teams are practicing those draw shots, I think. They uh, certainly are. It's, it's such an important part of the game now. And I, I like it. It's down to a challenge. It's down to skill. And it's a team shot. One plays, two sweep, one calls the line. So it's a team effort. And usually tie breaks obviously aren't an, aren't an option for these weekend tournaments. Okay. Uh, take way too much time. And we have penalty shooting in other sports also, football and hockey. So he's come, trying to come draw down to the one on the back of the button here. <coughs> freeze down to that one. They can see half of that, so this should be a pretty straightforward shot. Just depends on what angle he gets on that back stone. It's exciting at the Worlds when the teams are playing the draw shot because often it's up on the big screen and the crowd are watching and it 
beginning when you play the draw for hammer teams that the crowd can follow the stone down and they can see from the camera above how close each team gets it's becoming an exciting part of the game it's amazing how consistent these teams are too getting those mm -hmm. close to the pin yep, yep. Whoa. Yep, whoa. Yep, yeah. 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 fighting hard on this one yeah. Yeah. this looks yeah. light they got it past. Ooh, well, just rubs. a little rub. Still, still got. Yeah, still. Got, he was lucky with the result on that one. <laughs> yeah, the just rub. rubbed it ever so slightly. <laughs> now you know why the teams are down to bare arms. Sweeping like that. Boy, the skips have no voice left yep. at the end of the league. <laughs> just barely rubbed that, as you can see, and it just kept going. The weight was perfect. Of course, there. Uh, and again, this the ice and the stones are quite aggressive. They've got a nice swing to finish. So even though that rubbed, it still managed to pull itself back under. I'm not sure if he has much of a shot here. Try to thin that yellow and maybe and drive it over. I don't know if you can see enough of it. He probably can, but it's really going to have to be good. More. If it hits it just perfect, he might make three out of it. That's a really tough shot. If he's wide, he'll catch the stone on the top. He's wide, he'll catch this, but he's going to move it. Yeah, he's looking here. He's going to throw a big weight at this. Try to catch it really thin. I saw it really thick. If it goes wrong, he might give up too, though. Well, this is this is risky, but early in the game, he's going to have to take this big chance. This will be interesting. There's no other way at that back stone. The only other option he's got is a tap for one come down the other side and try to move that back to outscore him. Last rock here for Mavericks in the second end. Looking to yep. oh, possibly oh. score a couple oh. of points. Yeah, uh, He gets across the top of it. Really thin. Yeah. It's another steal for Fister. That, that, that steal that puts ah. Fister up two to nothing after two ends of play. Here at the Champry Masters, we're curling tour action. Okay, Team Marburgs are going to have to get something going here now. That's two ends away and two steals. That's an interesting end. We saw lots of rocks in play, mm -hmm. so we're just hoping for more. So seven teams here that will be playing in Pilsen at the Olympic qualifier event. Uh, the only team, as we said earlier, missing is China, who probably are, would be Estimated as one of the favorites going into that competition. Last two spots available for the Olympic Games. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting event. The men's event is is pretty even. I think this is going to be one of these weeks where it's down to good luck, curling, pulling all pulling everything together you need for that one week. Because going through the season, the various CCTs, people have finished above each other, below each other, head to head. So it's really an open week. And I think it's pretty important for many of the countries for funding and things like that too, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's unfortunately. It's a challenge for a number of countries. Um, whether I mean we we've got a, there's always discussions being held because you've got the Europeans just before. Do you want to send a team? You're basically talking a month. You've got the trip to the Europeans, you've got the Europeans, and you've got the week in between, then you've got the Olympic qualifiers, so you're on the ice for a solid month. Some countries elect not to have the same team play both events. Some countries elect, like the Czech Republic, we've got the same team playing both, using the Europeans as our final prep event for the o for Olympic qualifier. 
Pretty easy for you oh, being uh, okay. down the road. <laughs> down the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't even have to change currency. We no. just jump in a car and off we go. Pilsen's less than an hour away from Prague. So just to go quickly through the uh, the team list here, and we said China obviously. So we have the Czech Republic, your team, and that'll mm -hmm. be Yerzy Yerzy Needle. Yeah. Denmark will be uh, Tommy Sterne, who's playing here. Mm -hmm. Finland will be Kausta. Mm -hmm. Germany will be Baumann. Uh, Italy will be Retina. Netherlands oh. will be Van Dorp, also qualified. And with the Russians, Thanks their much, national sure. team and whatever combination they decide to show up with. Armin, we had an interesting weekend this weekend because four of those teams were in our section. So we had Is our own right? little mini Olympic qualifier. We did, warm -up. That, on, we did that on purpose. <laughs> just <to laughs> when the draw <laughs> came out, we thought, oh, it's the OQE plus a few. It's funny that uh, that just happened to be a coincidence because this draw was put together. I can, I can say that with a clear conscience. This draw was put together purely by ranking. On, on the world tour so uh, yeah, we play oh. these teams quite often so whether they're in the same section or we meet them in the playoffs we're, oh. we're pretty used to seeing the same faces and you were satisfied with your performance uh, against them any secrets you want to tell us no we had we had a good first game good last game and we struggled a little bit in the oh middle yeah. um, didn't quite go our way got very very close we were one stone away that we missed uh, against the Dutch um, so yeah, we've learned a lot. We've taken a lot away from this weekend. It's it's about this whole season, not just about these weekends That's in an Olympic year. Right. As long as everything moves toward that that big event, we're happy. So you would place China back in the, the group, or would you take China as being probably the favorite the ladies side certainly china is very strong they played in basel you're coaching of course the, your national coach of course responsible for both men's and women oh sorry for the Czech that, ladies yeah. sorry yeah for yeah. both the men's and ladies team yeah. we've got anna kubashkova who's yeah. back in the czech republic this weekend playing the first of the czech national playdowns weekends for a little roll here. Nice roll. Huh? Yeah, the guards, the guards are ways off the rings, and with this big swingy ice, that does help. Yeah. So Mark Fister's team there ranked 34th on the <laughs> world <laughs> ranking. And Marburg's uh, not that far behind. He's a 46th, so that's pretty good overall. Uh, but then those accumulative points over years. Yep. Nice shot. Oh, move that yellow. Nice shot. Clear the front up. Rafi Marki. Gardner by. There we go. Did leave a bit of a guard up there for. Yeah, that's. Maubergs now to utilize. That's a tough when you choose the run back, because you've got to also consider where that shot, where the shooter stone is going to go. Okay, they're working hard on this one. Working really hard on this one. It's swinging now. Fighting to keep it off. Oh, good sweep. Got to get off it, or it's going to come oh. out the other well, side. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem. That, that's that's the thing with the ice that's swinging. If you're if you're having to sweep it hard to get it past the guard, you're also giving it distance, which means it's often the choice of hitting the guard or coming out the other side. Yep. So and it's only second yeah, shot. Didn't it be maybe a touch deeper. Another run back here for uh, Enrico Fister. Mark's younger brother. Yep. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. What? Okay, they'll be glad to see the back of that guard. Roll the stone right to the side so it opens the front of the house. Gives Sweden nowhere to hide. Oh. Oh. 
Ja, jag också 03 där. Ja. ja. Jätte mycket, försiktigt, försiktigt. Väldigt, försiktigt. Nej, den är, den är längre, den är längre. Wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Some things take no interpretation. <laughs> det är mycket liv i den, kommer glida jättelångt. Den här linjen ska den till. Japp, japp. Kör, 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 ja. kör. Go, 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 go. Räcker, 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 räcker. Bra liv. Åh. Oh. They're choosing to run this back. They must be able to see half the stone. The problem is hitting it on the outside. You're going to roll yourself open. I think this run could roll yep, over to the yep, room. Yep. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Came across the top of it. Just caught it. Now it's shot. Again, cleared the front. It's always this big choice at this point in the end. Do you want to guard that one up? Do you want to do something with the yellow? Maybe roll, take it and roll to the wing. That red stone in the center is not quite wide enough to split the house. So you do, if you don't get the second stone position right, you leave an option for the double, clear the house. He's opted for the guard here. Putting it back and hoping for a miss. The line really important on this. Pretty good. Yeah, it's quite long on this swing. Might be open on the outside, on the out turn. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice back ring weight. You can come and get that right on the nose. Don't even have to know that the guard is there. Uh, guard, it's always tricky with this because if you pull the guard tight to the rings, you leave a run back. And if you leave the guard longer, you leave it come around with control weight. We certainly seen that yesterday with uh, one of the games we did with Nicholas Edin. Those guys are really good at those shots. Yeah, Team Adin really changed up the game. They really took on these runbacks and challenged other teams, and it's now a standard shot that you need to be able to play. Number one seeded team at this event. Ranked second on the world ranking right now. And they're playing against the young Swiss team, Staley. Okay, so they're going after this guard again. It's an interesting angle with the camera. It makes the rink look a lot shorter than it actually is. <laughs> That's a big yep. distance when oh, you're sitting oh, in the hack and looking way down there. Yep. At some point, they're, gonna, they're looking to come into the house now because they've got to get something set up. They're running out of stones. Indicating some sort of corner freeze. Yeah. Possibly. Be the best way to protect against the double, maybe. It would okay. Okay, you see this. Oh, it's the they can't hide it there. Yeah, if they freeze right on the shoulder of that stone, there's no double because it would jam and leave at least one. Mm. If they were to take it out, of course. The those rocks top, would be too close fyra, together. Then. Double possibility. Top four.
a tricky, tricky shot after a whole end of hitting. They've been playing guards, so they're not quite Rolling sure what that T line weight is going to be. Whoa, so it's the sweepers to take care of. They don't want to bounce, they don't oh. see that's. They really wanted to freeze that on there because any little bounce, any little space between the stones gives options. So you really want to lock that on. Not a bad shot, though. Not bad, it was pretty close. Yeah, he obviously he's got to hit the one in the forefoot first to try to come off. Jamming across the top of it. Again, this was another one where they were sweeping for an angle and you sacrifice distance for that. So after three ends of play, a quick update. Edin takes a 2 nothing lead over Staley after three ends of play. Mort Drummond, that's an interesting game. Scottish teams going against each other there. And what, one nothing? Oh, correction, just put up the third end. And it was, uh, looks like a two for Drummond. So two one after three ends for Drummond. And 2-1 uh, for Brewster over Van Dorp after three ends of play. So all pretty close. Oh. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. This one's coming down whoa. at big speed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Oh, look at that. Great shot. Oh. Happy with that. <laughs> Sweeper's got a break there. Coming down at that speed, there's very little you can do. Trister, <laughs> happy about that, the heavy equipment operator. So last rock here in the third for Maubergs. Is he trying to double or the nose hits? Just the nose, the double kind of will do it too. So forced to take one here in the third. And that means Fister leads two to one after three ends of play and gets the hammer back in the fourth. That was a great final shot by the Swiss because that, there was no options for Sweden but to take their one. Great force, great play. And we're here with World Curling Tour Champre Masters. And the Palladium in Champre. Here, high up in the mountains of the Swiss Alps. The Matterhorn not too far away. Have you seen that yet, Brad? I have seen the Matterhorn, and I actually didn't real. I saw it not when I was visiting Champery, and I didn't realize it was so close to here. I just happened to be looking on the maps, checking to see where my train route coming from Geneva, and I spotted the Matterhorn not far from here. I'm very embarrassed. I'm 21 years in Switzerland and still haven't seen the Matterhorn. <laughs> You're a Canadian uh, Scottish resident? Cana or? Canadian by birth, but 30 years in the UK. Okay. 16 in London and in Scotland before I did some coaching in China, now in the Czech Republic. All right. Cool. So pretty much around the world tour. <laughs> Johannes Potts with the first stone coming down here. Just putting up this under guard. So they're going to want this really nice and long. It's coming a little bit deep. But they're going to want to set up two guards here on the center line. So there must be wanting to steal and bring the game level. So for anybody interested in coming to Pilsen to take a look at those Olympic qualifiers, what uh, what can you tell us about about Pilsen and, or, and about the, the venue? I've been through Pilsen. Um, the venues have really 
really oh, nice no. arena. It's a double hockey rink. Um, they've got a training rink and then they've got the rink where this event is going to be played. Um, it's traditional, of course, a hockey rink that they are going to turn into a curling arena for the duration of this event. As I say, we're not far from Prague. It's less than an hour away. I think it's 50 some miles as the crow flies. And we'll have seven ladies teams and eight, lady and eight men's teams coming to compete for this final two spots at the Olympics. If you're not familiar, any teams that have been at the World Championships in the four years before have the right to come and play down. And even the Koreans are hosting, obviously the Olympics are in Korea, and so Korea men's and ladies go through as hosts. We're hosting the Olympic qualifier, but unfortunately that doesn't mean that we also get to go through as hosts. We're going to have to fight our way there. But luckily we've got a men's and ladies team going. There were eight ladies teams, but Norway now has stepped back, so it's a two in seven chance for a ladies team to get the final two slots at the Olympics. The first seven teams go on points earned over the previous two world championships. The eighth slot is filled by the hosts and the last two come out of the qualifier. This is only the second time they played the qualifier. The first one was for the Sochi Games. Um, and that was played in Fussen in Germany. So we're the host of the, only the second ever Olympic qualification event. I got some great TV numbers at Fussen event. I think Japan and China were Chinese, The Chinese love watching curling on TV. When, when Betty Wang, who's one of their national sporting heroes, won the world championships, I heard the number 60 million TV viewers in China which of course to the Chinese is a very small percentage, but to any other country is an impressive viewing figure. China will have both men's and women's uh -huh. teams there. And Betty Wang, who we were just talking about, will be skipping the ladies team. From Harbin. So there'll be big publicity for that in China. So just uh, reiterate the, chi the women's section Czech Republic Denmark Finland Germany Italy Latvia and you said Norway is no longer in there oh, they're not they're not competing so it's seven teams just news nice shot yeah, very nice. again you can see how fully they got buried and that top stone's only in the eight foot so if you've got a long guard, it's almost like it's not there. You can really have a big finish and get buried with the stones very close together on this ice, which is nice. Good mixed doubles ice. And just last week here, of course, the mixed championships were played on, the, on this ice. The mixed world championships, and that was a final between Scotland and Canada. And Grant Hardy was skipping that team. The winning Scottish team is uh, in action tonight with his team for Smawat against Drummond. Greg Drummond. Yep. Grant's really getting a good uh, stay in Champoy. He had the world mixed and then he stayed on and here he is now back on the ice four days, five days later. Anybody should know the ice by now. Him, I he certainly think. should, and I think that expi partially explains why they're playing top eight. This is well, was the solid performance what I saw from them today. Good young team. Well, actually, not that big. A no, there's been a big shakeup in the teams that you've probably used to seeing from Scotland. Uh, Kyle Smith was a selected team for the Olympics for Team GB, so that left the other performance players to form up new teams for this season. So you, you're seeing lineups on the ice that you won't have seen before. Another nice, little, just rolled a little too far. Rooster looking really solid this weekend with his new team, 5-0 and record. Playing against the Dutch in the quarterfinals. Yeah. 
Yeah, this just, that just rolled a little further than they wanted. That gives an angle on the other side. Yeah, Sweden just want a little bump and roll on that. Seems the uh, the Swiss are uh, controlling this game a little bit. Yeah, you see a lot of yellow in the house. Swedes are running after them a bit. There's a little separation here, so if they get this right, this would be a nice little hit and flop. Take the pressure off a bit, that's mm -hmm. for sure. They need to, Sweden needs to get a stone safe, and that's not happened. Need to try to force a mistake. So this is a really important shot. He really needs to get this just on the inside. Enough weight to just flop on top of the stone that's sitting almost on the button. No, it's got a swing. This is looking like here it comes now. Here it really comes now. Down. They've really got to get this right. This is going to be a little bit tight and roll too. F oh, he rubbed the top one. <laughs> they didn't even get a chance to be too tight and roll too far. <laughs> yeah, that might have rolled over top of that right and just touched it there. Again, this is really hard with this really aggressive ice. You've yep. got to really be on top of it and read when that stone is going to break and swing. Clearly missed the sweep on that. And here we see it again. I'm pretty sure it did hit, didn't it? We had a couple of these this weekend where it looked fine, looked fine, looked fine, and all of a sudden it just jumped. And it's once the stone starts moving, the sweepers really struggle to hold it. If it changes direction, you can't put it back. I think the Swedes were a little fortunate with that hit. It might have rolled away. Wow. Yeah. So Rafi Marki taking a run at the center guard. Clearing that off. So Fister have last stone in this end. They're trying to move things around to put themselves in a good scoring position here. Sitting one and three at the moment. Okay. We were speaking on the coaches bench this weekend that the next innovation of the game is to got to be coaching drones so we drones. can coaching <laughs> drones so we can have hover above the <laughs> rings and have a really good look keep bringing my fly swatter i think <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a, an interesting session in uh our curling rink in prague the national tv came in to shoot promos for the olympic qualifier and they were flying drones down over the players as they slid down the ice and they did some lovely establishing shots, but unfortunately the drones pulled the warm air down from the ceiling and completely flattened the ice. Is that right? But it was a great experience. They got some great shots. Okay. Yep, well, certainly we should probably create some air movement around, wouldn't it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's real. Some interesting angles set up here on this stack of stones that spread out down the center line, so the guard comes off. They're going to want to come in and lock that in, freeze on top of that stone. They're calling the guard. Sorry, my mistake. I just saw the ice. And looked up and thought that's what they were calling in. He's putting the guard back on this. Swiss have got an option on that left red. They come down with control weight. They can just flop it and move, push that back, move it out of the way. But at the moment, so you can see a good chunk of that stone. Back ring weight is going to move that out to the side, and you could be lying three. You're coming down and having a look now, but the choice is do you do it now, or do you save it? 
Danger is you don't get to the inside of it. Bump the Swedish stone back. Team discussion about the best way forward with this. I don't think Mark's convinced. Now he's going back for the guard. They've got last stone in this end, so they know that the scoring stone can come later. They just want to make some sure that the guard's out of the way and they've got the best chance of... Yeah, I don't see how you can get to the inside of that red one. You don't think you can get no, in there? No, I don't think so. Well, I don't know, with the finish, you, can get you, you only have to Maybe move get to the nose. You only have to move it to like the it. edge of the 8 foot to count that top stone. No, I don't think you can get into it. We've seen some pretty spectacular <laughs> finishes on stones this weekend, I'll tell you. Well, maybe. When you think you're sitting on the outside and you're all of a sudden on the inside. Well, we're not going to know it with this rock. It's taken off the guard. Okay, so Sweden can see that. We may never know, Brad. No, nope, I don't think we're going to get to better Toblerone <laughs> on it. <laughs> every, every time I see a Toblerone bar, I have to laugh because when you play the Basel men's, yep. as you're eliminated, there's a little man standing there with a pack of five Toblerones with a bow, bow around it as a goodbye gift. <laughs> so as you're playing your last stone and you glance up and he's standing there, you think it's either we're getting the Toblerone or they're getting the Toblerone. <laughs> Like the hangman coming. I think he, I think he does it on purpose. He stays <laughs> in the in the eye shot of the person sliding out just to incentivize them. You, as much as I like Toblerone, you want to hold that off as long as possible. <laughs> well, they're going to shuffle these around now and pop that one off the back. Got to put themselves into a good position here. Little yep. short run back. Yep, yep. Keeping that fairly straight. Yeah. There we go. Well, now it's accessible, of course. I don't know why they just didn't tap that a little bit. I'm not sure why they threw that weight at it either, because that was obviously you're going to lose your shooter if you throw that weight at it. Now it's all so. Now it's all skates. How traffic? Mark is play a hit and roll here in to lane two. Bono. He's deciding to try and remove both red ones. Take take the tough one. Why would you take the easy one if you can take the take tough the one? Well, it's, it's a t we call it a TV shot. <laughs> uh, they're having second thoughts again. The world always looks different from the hack. Oh, good idea. Come back down again. Yeah. I think this is a better call here. Get this red one roll over and lay sit two. This is something that, you know, you see the difference when the elite teams play versus more club curling is that when they see this kind of shot, they'll come back down and discuss it and start again. He's, for some reason he's concerned with playing on that red one in the forefoot that he's concerned he might, might clip that red one in the top. They'll be discussing somewhere in all of that, plan A and plan B. If this doesn't happen, what then what's the next best option? He's got two thirds of it. Well, he's taking, he's going for the double. He's going for the TV shot. Mm -hmm. It's there. But Stone's fairly close together, so it's pretty controllable. Just have to get the angle right on the top one and the rest do the work. Mark Fister. First rock here in the fourth end. Yep. Whoa! 
loses everything. Well, that, I doubt that was plan B. <laughs> no. <laughs> they certainly threw it hard enough. So, looks like we're heading for a blank on this one. Certainly does. Sweden will try to hang right on the edge and hope for a miss. Happens more often than you'd think. Put a stone at the side, you think just throw big weight at it and rip it out. And how many times does it come down and swing and nose and stay in the house? Force you to a one. But all in you, we remember that. The line's good. They're going to bring us right over to the side of the rings. The best chance for a mistake. Of course, it has to stay in the rings, <laughs> which it didn't. <laughs> so. Well, this is a shot now you can't miss as a throw through. Literally, both of <laughs> Jokingly going to play on that stone. Fister are looking. Yeah, this is always an interesting point. Whether you want to take one, put it on the board, and sit two ahead. Whether you, whether you want to blank this, so he's obviously calling now for the throw through. But there are times when you would actually take the one. Just keep yourself far enough ahead. If you were sitting too ahead, you might have put one on the board anyway, just to open up that gap, make things easier for you. Well, no doubt about that one. Yeah, that one didn't need sweeping. And with that, with the blank end <laughs> here in the fourth, the score remains two to one in Fister's favor, and Fister maintains the hammer going into the fifth end. We're here at the Champre Masters. We're curling to our action. Quarterfinals, Saturday evening here, Champry, Switzerland. After the halfway point, Champry Masters, World Curling Tour Action, quarterfinals. My name is Armin Harder. I'm here with Brad Askew, national coach of the Czech men's and women's teams. And we're at Malbergs from Sweden, playing Mark Fister from Switzerland. Fister. Obviously, the far more experienced team. Malberg's well, still a very young team. I think they're only a couple of years out of juniors, aren't they? Right? Yeah, I, um, the team changed around a little bit. I know um, Patrick has been up through the juniors at the same time of teams like Mowat and uh, Smith. So they're not far out of juniors. Finish! So, zone three guard, and they're going to come around and try to sit top four here. Hangs a little bit wide, doesn't quite finish underneath. Edin steals one in the fourth to take a three nothing lead against Staley. And. Uh, Van Dorp, Brewster, Brewster still up two to one in that game with the hammer after four ends. Mollet, Drummond, that game is two to one after four ends and Drummond has the 
No, sorry, Mowat has the hammer. So all very close still. Quarterfinals. Quarterfinals get 3,000, and the semifinals get 5,000. So there's 2,000 Swiss francs just alone on this game, and the opportunity to play for much more. Simon Gempler. You know, basically the only one from Adelboden, this team playing out of Adelboden. I'm not sure I even know where that is. It's another mountain <laughs> mountain village <laughs> in Switzerland. Okay. It's in the Bern region. Oh, okay. I just needed a big city to go yeah, by. It's not too far from Bern. And uh, Sven Michel, this was Sven Michel's former team. Sven left that team last year. Switzerland didn't quite get the shot they wanted out of this. Left's a bit of an angle here, so they can hit, take these out, and roll behind the two guards they've set up. And uh, I'm not sure about Malbergs, are they? I know Niemann is out of uh, Lexand. I actually don't yeah, know where they actually where they base out of. Uh, it's different in the Swiss, the Swiss system are often based at their own rink where many oh other countries have players from all over the country caught the second one no, that wasn't oh. a good shot it turned in or a little bit light great opportunity here for the Swiss now to maybe go for two yeah the Swedes are struggling a little bit trying to match up the ice they're being ah. given with the speed that it's coming down. They're just being caught out on the swing or maybe the speed or even if whether it's a slightly soft release. This yeah. ice is very, very punishing on a soft release. Yeah. That means you're not directing yeah. the stone toward the brush. You're letting it swing too early. And boy, oh boy, when it starts to move, the sweepers really struggle to hold it. Oh. Okay, Don't get me wrong, we go. like swinging ice. Straight ice is very, very difficult to play on. So, rotation. so many more shots available when the ice is swinging. Much more aggressive oh. game. Oh. Yeah, a lot of the technical sessions with these elite teams are about how you turn the rotation up and down based on the ice conditions whether you want to get the stone to run straighter and a little bit deeper, or whether you want it to swing with a big finish. You often have teams with one or maybe two left-hand players as well, which puts them on the other side of the hack, and they can come in at a different angle that right-handed uh, right throwers can play. Gives you more options. And yeah, that might just rotate back. No, yeah. didn't spin back in, <laughs> as it so often does. Got another wide open in now, all of a sudden. Yeah, it's bad luck for the Swedes. They set up a double guard and then they opened their own stones. Oh, oh, top, top, top. That's good. Rico. Rico! Yep, yep, yep! Looking for a little bit of a roll to the side. And they managed to get that. Yeah, great shot. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Don't need to me yet. This will be frustrating for Sweden as well because they had the double guards set up and now they're gone. House is open again. It's really, really difficult to play a multi scoring end yep. and you've got nothing to hide yep. behind. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So this is the last big European CCT event before we head for the European Championships, again back here in Switzerland, in St. Galen. It used to be a CCT in Edinburgh, in Scotland, but that's no longer with us, unfortunately. So 
this is a big big event for these teams that's why you've got the range of teams you've got here most of them heading for the Europeans in less than a month's time and of course CCT and the World Curling Tour over the summer having merged and now rebranded all their events as World Curling Tour events and it won't be at a you know, it's hard to, it'd be hard to get used to saying that. You're uh, so used to saying CCT. CCT. <laughs> CCT started 15 years ago and uh, really got uh, a lot of these teams grew up in the CCT playing uh, playing in Europe. Still throws me off when I type that in and expect to see the CCT site come up and it's you know, <laughs> completely different now. Pops you right to yep. the World Curling Tour. And so Frederick Newman coming down now. Vice for the vice skip for the Swedish team. They're going to try to get something set up here with that stone that's just off the corner of the ring. They've got to try to force a mistake from Swiss and leave themselves an option of building something up. Still too far open, didn't quite get far enough yeah. underneath, didn't get mm -hmm. a big enough finish. Have it just stopped on them or something. Yeah. 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 Light, it might have like. hit a little bit of a flat patch, pebble. A little bit flat there. Dig in. in the line tunnel. Yep. Yep. Comes a big weight shot here, hoping to clear this up. Sweet yeah. are holding it. Done. Great shot. Oh, and he rolls in and too. rolls in the bonus. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Bonus shot. The Swiss are playing very, very well this game. They're really managing to get the get the line right, get the weight right, call the sweeping. Getting good, good results. Lite kort har vi skjutning eller kvar? Lite in bara. Ja. Den pall. Okej. Vicka in typ en sten bara. Och bajta. Ja det är fint då. Den pall. So we're down to Skips Rocks already. This game just seems to be flying along. It does. Big hitting games, they move quickly. It's been really hard. The Swedes have made attempts to get something yep. set up and it's just not happening. They're facing Whoa. empty yep. houses time and time again. Yep. Nay. Whoa. Yep. So they're looking to take yep. this and roll. Across. There we go. Nice roll to the center. Unfortunately for the Swedes, there's nothing out front to protect it. No, this is a totally open house, there's nowhere to hide. Sounds like a song, no place to run, no place, no place to hide. <laughs> I've sung that a few times from the coach's bench. It's been nice coming this weekend after having the mixed world championships here. Everything is still set up from that big event, so feels special this year. Coach's bench still in place, great view. Out on the ice, you can hear all the action. Yeah, uh, pr pretty the only thing different this uh, for this event this is we usually don't have the coach's bench mm -hmm. down the far end for the Masters. Everything else is, uh, is, yeah. is the same. Yeah, no, it's... it's. But it does add, of course, with the far end. It does help to be out on the ice and, you know, in your, in your comfort zone. Right. Yep, yep. With your blanket. Yep. <laughs> No, oh, I'm surprised oh, they actually gave yeah. you the blankets. <laughs> We've oh, hidden them so they don't oh, take them away. <laughs> Nose hit. All the options are with the Swiss here. Coming up to that all-important six then and... So this is what we talked about earlier. Even though this is open, 
and unless there's a miss, we're not going to get a score of two here. Fifth end, put another point on the board, open it up to two-point lead. Fifth or sixth end is usually when you make that decision. You wouldn't do it earlier. You try to save the hammer for a bigger scoring end. But as we get to the back end of the game, two-point lead is important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm off. Ja, kann ich nicht so weit los haben. Streif. Und dann spinnt spin er dann gleich raus, weißt du? Ja. <laughs> so we're down to the last rock. And uh, I do believe they'll be blanking this. Clearing. Yeah, they will be. That was a good, hot, good hit for the Swedes because the front of the stone is hanging off the front. If they nosed it, they wouldn't be in the I wonder the if they'll be blanking it the other way and maybe this side's a little dangerous. I was going to say, Careful looking the, at that yellow the stone in the back. The back. <laughs> and sometimes these rocks have eyes. It looks like a long way away, but you'd be surprised. I think I might be peeling it the other way. That's the safe way to peel. If we were teaching a junior team, we'd stop them right here and there and tell them to peel the other way so you're not driving your stone toward a possible jam. Ooh, did he flare it? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, they got away with that yeah, one. They and uh, got away with it, but there was an intake of breath there. Yeah, that's it. That's he threw it wide. The sweepers had nothing to do. They just had to hope it stayed on that line. And with that, another blank end in the fifth. The score remains two to one. And uh, going to the sixth end, Fister has the hammer, but I have a suspicion that Fister is going to go go for it here and tr try and make that two by all counts and that sixth end we're here world curling tour curling champ there <laughs> <You're gonna be laughs> <all messed up. laughs> I'm gonna have to Ma write it on my hand <laughs> to make sure I say WCT instead yeah. of CCT masters in Champry And it's every year. It's a wonderful event. Great hosting up here. And people just yep. welcome us. It's a great event in the arena, and it's lovely when you step outside and you're surrounded completely by mountains. Mm -hmm. Sure, pretty. Yeah. yeah, it's a very lovely place. Yeah, Switzerland are going to want to put two on the board here, open up a gap. Hold Sweden in the seventh end to a low score and then hit what we call hit for home. So in the fifth end, another steal of two for Edin and uh, he's got full control of that game with a 5 nothing lead over Staley. But that's not really a surprise, the number one seat in this competition. Young Swiss team did quite well to get into the quarterfinals. Brewster okay. takes one against Van Dorp, so that's a three to one game after five ends. That's a good result because last time I looked there was four red stones in the house. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> he's pretty happy to walk away from that with a one. And the other game, uh, Mollet Drummond there standing in front of the scoreboard. I can't see that right at this moment. I'll give you an update shortly. There's still two to one after four ends, and they're coming yeah. down to the last rocks here in the fifth. Okay, I'll say no. Just saw him missing oh, the guard on that Eddie. Honey free, Adam. Sweets. It does happen. Uh, we always uh, think uh, that the team of Dean are faultless with their hitting, but every once in a while you get a bit of luck in your favor. Okay, this is an important stone now for Johannes Potts. Get the roll, huh? You see a band-aid on Johannes' middle finger. He was at work and he saw pipes that were loose and were rolling and he tried to stop it and a machine came down and took the tip of his finger off. So that's what the band-aid is for. Okay. Well, 
You do have well, five fingers, don't eight, you? Exactly. Eight, eight, ten fingers, so. <laughs> Got spares. Just need to be able to hold the broom. He was favouring it a couple of weeks ago when he was playing in Prague. It would just imagine. freshly happen, but he seems to be fine with it now. Oh, another rock going to come in down on top of that. Sammy Gempler. Really solid lead thrower, Simon, throughout the years. Really consistent. These, when you play at this elite level, the lead is so important to your game. If the lead stones are not in position, you struggle. You really, really rely on your lead to be able to set up the end you want. And here we see another nice rock. Teams are really on top of this swing and weight control now. Everything just hugging the center line. This will now just be down to a matter of judging the angle that you want the stone to finish on to set you up for a future shot. As it gets a little mess here. So, probieren. Ja. Steig aus den Händen lassen. Vielleicht passt der Garten noch oder so. Oder? Hier. Ja. Müssen wir nicht, oder? Nein. There's a lovely view of the mountains of Champery over their shoulders in the background. <laughs> I keep looking at that. <laughs> so do I. Every time I look up, I say, well, there you go. You don't even need to look out the window. It's dark now, anyways. So, almost 9 o'clock here in Champery. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a semi-final action at 9 a.m. local time That's, uh, exactly 12 hours we'll be starting that and then at 12 30 i believe we will have the final I just want to check that make sure i'm not telling you fibs 12 30 the final big big, big discussion now with the swiss we call it a board meeting yeah. when the whole team is down. So, obviously, with the hammer, not too keen on all that red granite laying in front of the house. Yeah, it just cuts down your options if you've got the hammer. They're staggered. So run backs aren't an option. They're just going to have to try to tidy this up. Some of the locals coming in to see what's going on, what all the yelling is about. Almost got that <laughs> one. So close. <laughs> He indicated that one right at the beginning. Uh, was he going yeah. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> they laughing? They saw how close they came to that. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure we'll have a good replay here. Won't be able to see it that good from this angle, but uh, that's red one. That's there we go. Look at that. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He's very lucky he didn't pick that. Yeah, great work there. Off the back. Finley. 
Polar HD TV crew. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> You're doing a great job. I guess I shouldn't tell that until we're finished the final one. It's okay, you got a wave. Uh, They're still yeah. smiling. No, doesn't look happy with that. They're just going to shuffle these around a little bit now. Oh, no, it looks uh, he's indicating a hit and roll, and roll. on yep. front. So he doesn't want to go far, just sit, set up a direct run back on that top yellow. Three marquee. Coming now. We're happy with it. Sweepers. Yep, 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 yep. See it, see it, see it, see it, see brother, Dominic Murky, his uh, spare for De Cruz. We'll be spare at the Olympics. Bloodstone's just sitting high enough that gives Sweden an option on a double. Switzerland wanted to just chip and roll, but that's come too far, so they tried to sweep it to the side to level those two stones up, and it just... Oh, there we go, replay of nearly chipping off the back stone. <laughs> We've all been there. We know that feeling. Oh, definitely set up for a two now, aren't they? Yeah. Really nice. The Switzerland, if, if that stone was one foot further back... There'd be no just at an angle with big weight. They can try to come across. If nothing else, tip that off from so behind that stone. Actually a triple there if they played it off the top. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Stone's oh. on the way. Oh. No, just hit it a little bit too thick. Oh. All right. mm -hmm. Pull it off the back. Yeah. Yeah. All of these stones have separation. None of them are locked in, so there's options on angles. Makes a big difference whether you've got a couple of centimeters gap between the stones or whether the stones are touching and locked. It's an outside double, but you lose your shooter. Clearing length. I can't see yeah, a lot of yeah. either one of them. Yeah. In fact, uh, that looks a lot thinner than when you looked at it from above. <laughs> That's one does. of those, yeah, I think you're there's too thin. This is why we need the coaching drones. <laughs> You'd have already written down something on your paper and then you realize the angle actually isn't there. Good view across the other sheets. Oh, there's a handshake. It's one game over. Well, that's Edine taking, winning that game quite handily. Yep. Against yep. Staley. Yep. 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 Sweepers trying to hold this online. Nope. They did try that thin double, and they just caught the top one. So close. He obviously went down to the hack, thought he could see enough of it to take it over the top okay. and pick those two red stones out. Okay. Just too tight. Uh, Frustrating when it's that close. 
You won't get another shot at it. At least it's opened that up now. A double possibility for Sweden, or Swedish team. And they're uh, playing the card. It's always frustrating when you have that lovely double set up and you just miss it because you know you're not going to get out of the chance at it. Looks like they're playing the guard here. Certainly are. It's guard weight. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah exactly. Fandy wants his own two mid guard off the rings. Prevent it running back, but still We're gives them all. Yeah, pretty aggressive call. Yup! 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 need to swing it. Swing it. Okay. Oh. Edin stole another one on the six, so that game was six to nothing in the final after six ends of play. How we scored? In Scotland, they refer to that as a granny. A granny. So Starley got grannied. Didn't get a point on the oh, board. Okay. heard that one before so first they've got some great terms for curling it's been 300 and some years of curling history they've had plenty of time to come yeah, up with some interesting yeah, sure there's names. some that are long forgotten already too yeah so van Darp ties up brewster and they're three three after six ends of play so that's a lot yeah. pretty tight game yeah. That's an interesting oh, game because oh, oh. number one's playing number eight, so a tight game. The Dutch yeah. are playing really, really well to hold on to this. Playoffs are, of course, uh, hey, just got to get to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, a new, new game after that. Yeah, two competitions every weekend, the round robin and the playoffs. It all starts from scratch again. This is a really important shot for Sweden because if Switzerland managed to get points on the board here, I'm afraid it's going to be a big task to get back. Oh, we it here. Can we anything up on it? So quick, so this here is like three reds coming to sit in. Some of Team Adin have taken up residence at the side of the rink, watching their compatriots. Three reds here, we nothing either. Get themselves. They are the ones that They are the ones that are going to be facing. They are the ones that are facing either Fister or Malbec. They are the ones that are going to be facing. They are the ones that are going to be facing. They are the ones that are going to be facing. They are the ones that are going to be facing. They bit of trouble there down on the last rock, and he's looking so at uh, the three really well guarded. Drummond rocks. Yeah, I think he's trying to figure out how to get in there. There's a big mess out front as well. Not going to give you many options. There's five guards on come, three stones. Got to come through a port, draw right to the button. I've seen him do this many times before. This is a big shot. So. Marburgs back to this game. First skips rocks here in the six. Yellow has the hammer. It's hanging. The Swedes are waiting for it to move. Get the right angle on it. So it's moving now into line. Momentan. Ja. Gives up a steal of one. Moment. Don't miss it by much. Yeah, when you're facing a pile of opposition stones, a one is a pretty good result. Unfortunately, the one. The steal of one means it's yeah, three to one after six ends for Drummond. So, so Mount still got he's got his work cut out for him. He's going to need a two and a steal to walk away with a victory yeah. here. 
Wenn sie spielen würden, hier so. Ja, ja. Ja, das ist ein Gratis für drei Minuten. Aber ich muss hier unbedingt so bleiben. Fister ist still looking at this. They want the best outcome from this shot to set them up for a scoring shot with the last one. Down to skip stones, the skip two. Hast du keine Kraft? Just gotta be careful here. Oh, so, die Belege. Let's get turned around on them. Bite them in. Bite them real bad. Wasser nicht, oder? Sometimes you need to sacrifice your own stone to get yourself in a better position, one that's not probably not going to count anyway. Little redirect, little in off. You're going to come off this one and try to set. Oh, looks like all the under. What they don't want to do is come off at too thin an angle on this, touch one of the reds and pop their yellow off the button. So this is an important yeah. shot. It's full wall. Simon Gempler holding the broom. Plays lead rocks. Gempi, the question is, if you play clearing, you have to play. Oh, that's it. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, exactly. Good view of what the skip can see looking down from the hack. And it's away. They're on it hard. They're on it hard. So it's got to be tight of the line they're looking for. Okay. What's up? So they've sacrificed their outside stone to bring a stone into position, move that top red off to give themselves some room. They hit that a little bit thicker than they wanted, bounced a little bit higher. But they're lucky they didn't touch that button stone. Och det var på järnen ett då. Vilken, den här eller? Nej, den här ligger liksom en halv nedanför. Tråkigt är järnen ett men det går inte göra så mycket tror jag. Ja, så vi måste ta jättetunn. Då kanske vi får ner den här. Sweden är looking if they want to move that. Det är inte bra om vi bara har just want to tap and lock it in. Ja, det är bara att göra looking at drawing and just... Making sure that the maximum of one available to Switzerland. Might be a little dangerous to move any of those around. I think that's what they're looking at because they don't want to set this up for a score more than one. It's not a crisis if Switzerland score a one that puts them two points ahead. Which means gives Sweden an opportunity to then come back, hopefully with a two, even the even the game up. So they just want to draw down on top of this. Leave a halo of red stones around the top of the four foot ring. Give no way in behind and leave only jams. Oh, hold it, hold it long. They're calling for lines, so they're asking the sweepers to try to hold this position. This is coming up well short. No damage, though, I don't think. No. That was a long way short of what they were looking for, so. I'm wondering if that was maybe a fresh path they were coming down. The Swiss want to make two, they're going to have to play red on the yellow. That's a pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we go. Big discussion. See, I th you can come around that right hand side with back four weight. Where he's got his brush right now, touch that and just flop in for you too. That, that red guard is a long way off. That's easily able to swing around that. Just back four weight, edge of back eight weight. They're not even looking at that. Well, he put his brush there, but they. I think they're going to try something else. Sometimes you get tunnel tunnel vision. Yeah, they're looking at the front now. No, they've been looking at the front the whole time. You know, don't even think they've looked at that. Looking at it I now. think <laughs> now, now, now Enrico's looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the shot I would call. There you Come go. around and just flop it and bounce in. There's That guard is a long yeah. way off, a good eight feet up. There's plenty well, of room to swing. We've seen yeah, many, yeah. many stones finish big on toward the center line. I think that raise red on the yellow. Or if you hit that wrong, you may just give up a steal of three. Pick out your own or something if they come like that. If they come from this side, even if they hit that wide, they should still get the one. Well, they're calling your shot here at Brad, so... I was obviously talking too loud. <laughs> I heard you down there. This is very, very makeable shot. That guard is a long way up. Actually, you can just draw in there. And yeah, it's basically an el 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 last stone draw. Don't, draw shot. Don't, need to, don't need to hit that ah, red one at all. I think just to be cautious that they don't come up short. They're going to play enough weight just to catch the inside of that and flop onto the yellow on the button. Take a lot of ice. I think he only literally only wants back four weight. He can't yep, come up short yep. on the draw or they won't get two out of this. Yep, yep. Nice soft rotation. So this should finish big. Coming off the wall they've now. Given nope, up on they've it given already. up. It's obviously wide. Oh, no, it's short. Yeah, Sorry. Short. Yeah. Really short. See, again, that Sweden stone came up really short and now the Swiss stone has come up short. So that's yeah, score of one here in the sixth. And that will take Fister to a three to one lead after six ends of play here in quarterfinal action at the Champagne Masters. Marburgs is to make up two here in the seventh and eighth ends. They really need to get something going on this end because they can't leave everything to the last end. Just gives Switzerland a chance to hit everything that slows down. Switzerland are going to come top four and control the forefoot and you're probably going to be seeing guards. From the Swedish team trying to set themselves up for two or more. Brewster manages only one in the seventh to give him a 4 3 lead over Van Dorp. Van Dorp's got the hammer coming home in the eighth end. Our game was flying along now and just come to a stall. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of big discussions over the positioning in that last end. It slowed things down a little. Yeah, to make you so this is going to see a pretty classic first four stones. Top four corner guard, top 12 corner guard, I think. Right out of the textbook. All three are out sweeping this one. Coming up a bit short. It's really, really important to get these corner guards in a good position. That's, that's too short, unfortunately. That gives you options to come around either side of that. Really needs to be tighter to the rings when the ice is swinging this big. So that's a 50% shot, I'm afraid. Four off. Four off. Peter, four, 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 four,
Bis zur Vorvier ist schon gut. Die Linie ist perfekt. Nur mal länger schauen. Ganz ja. Ja, 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 ja. Komm, ich, komm, ich, komm, das ist kurz. Komm, 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 Perfect line with the one in the rings. No, it's a little bit wide, a little bit short on legs. I don't think they wanted to leave a guard either. No, you don't want to leave a guard when your opposition has the hammer. That's not a good shot. It's a good seven feet separation there, so you can get around that quite easily. Johannes Pats. Just a little hard. They're not doing the classic four, they're coming around the corner guard, but again, as I say, that corner guard is so long that you can see that right around the other side. We're having a look at something there on the ice. So that's come right in deep and out the other side. Switzerland are going to get rid of this guard. Make this job as hard as possible for Sweden. Yep. Yep. What? Don't relax. It's interesting how many double guards we've had set up and nobody's played a chip shot or a tick shot. Haven't seen one all weekend. No. <laughs> oh, I've seen a few. Uh, the Scots played a few earlier, but uh, it's tricky when the ice is swinging big. I saw Michael Goodfellow play a perfect one and then completely miss the second one. Vincent Stenberg here, hoping to get something set up for Team Sweden. They're replacing the guard and they're going to want this one a little okay. bit deeper, protect that stone on the okay, right hand side. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Don't want to leave a run back, it, this is this is the difficult okay. judgment. Long enough for a guard but not close enough for a run back. <laughs> that rock pretty well exactly in the same place that it was before. Switzerland have the advantage here, they can just keep hitting and clearing. All the work is down to the Swedes. S the Swiss will just defend, try to not let them set anything up. I was watching a game the other day from the stands, I think it was yesterday or the day before and some locals came up and they were discussing things and they saw my jacket that had national coach and one of them leaned over and said, we're having a discussion, curling isn't an Olympic sport is it? Okay. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> there's I just all I could think is there's seven teams here going to be fighting it out for the two last spaces of the Olympics, it most certainly is an Olympic sport. With the addition of mixed doubles this year. I guess maybe some of these real back in high up in the mountains may not have a television. <laughs> uh, just uh, take in the fresh air and uh, read books or something. Or? I think the Olympic rings embedded in the ice is a good clue. This is the first Olympic yep. Games that will feature mixed doubles, so there'll be four medals available instead of three. Traditionally, it's men's gold, ladies' gold, and Paralympic gold, wheelchair gold, but this year there'll be mixed doubles as well, so eight teams will be contesting that. Those Olympic rings where that rock just landed is uh, advertising for the Olympic Museum down in Lausanne. Okay. Oh, that's where it is. Lausanne, yeah, I saw an advertisement for it, but I wasn't sure. Now this mixed doubles mm. competition will be starting before the official opening ceremonies take place in order to get those uh, 
Bad event. Yeah, they go away, precise. In. Yeah. 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 The, the, other, other, the other sports at the Olympics always are marvel at the fact up. that curling has played almost the whole spread of the Olympics. Now we've stretched beyond that. Right. We're starting two days before. And I think we'll, curling will be the second last event uh, on the schedule, too, with uh, I think the ice hockey final being the last one. So I don't think we're going to lack for, oh, for oh. watching curling oh, in the Olympics. Nice little hit and roll. Yeah, the ch uh. It's a bit of a bitter point for us. The Czech Republic missed out by one stone going to the mixed doubles so. Olympics. Playing Three Team Vietnam. Switzerland. And we had a nice stone tucked around a guard and just showed enough of it that they could pick it and push it to the back of the forefoot. Both the teams in that game, that semi-final, had no points. So whoever proceeded to the final had enough points to go directly to the Olympics. And in this case, Sweden came out on top. I'm oh, sorry, Switzerland, Switzerland came out on top. Switzerland, Switzerland came having out on top. Yeah. qualified all for all three events, men's, women's and mixed doubles. Nice, nice, Gampi! Nice little clear, run back and take both of those stones, spill them out of the house. There's mixed doubles, I think, believe there's only eight countries yes. involved. Yeah, there's only eight. So they'll start two days before the opening ceremony. There's no games that evening while the opening ceremony's on, then they'll be finishing and then men's and ladies will hit the ice for training for two days and start about day three, I think it is, of the games. Stretching right to almost the closing ceremony. Mine's good, bra linja. This is going to come up a little short to get ah. buried. That needed another two feet. And there's enough of it sticking out that that can be picked straight out. Mowat in the seventh end makes two to tie up that game with Drummond. Drummond having the hammer. In the eighth. Yeah, there's some serious talent on that Scotland versus Scotland game. Multiple world and Olympic medalists and world junior champions and world mixed champions. World mixed champions. <laughs> <laughs> they've got the lot. If there's a medal available, there's somewhere on that sheet, they've got it. And their uh, Olympic team, Kyle Smith, is also an extremely young team. They've got a lot of curling ahead of them. There will be some good competitions, I believe, between certainly between Maud and Smith coming up over the years. Yeah, there's a few Olympic cycles left in both of them. Team Smith were selected, so there was no play down in Scotland. They were nominated by their governing body. So they will go straight to the Olympics, and the other teams are now changed around for the next Olympic cycle. Fresh faces on fresh teams. Do you know if the Scottish teams will be, the Olympic teams will be a chance going to the Worlds? Yes, they will. There was one, there was one year where they tried the Canadian system, um, but there was a lot of blowback over that. Yes. When Eve Muirhead won the Worlds and wasn't allowed to go back and defend it the year afterwards. So I don't think that will be happening again somehow. Tom just missed a shot there. Yeah, just oh, rub the edge of his stone and push yeah. them into the center. So and this the is the Dutch a have an open draw for for two for two to win the game. Yep. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you there. No, fine. Sorry, I just looked, yep. was trying to look at the position and the scoreboard the, at the, the same time. Swiss, uh, yeah. The Swiss, the Swiss don't allow their well, they, they do their Swiss championships. A nice double there. The Swiss do their Swiss championships during the Olympics, so the Swiss both Swiss teams can't go to the Worlds. And I think that's all right. 
Yeah, no, there's oh, no. It, there's a few teams on that uh, don't send their teams to both. Obviously, in Olympic year, the Olympics is the important event because it only comes around once every four. I think most of those teams are out of gas by the time they they had to play <laughs> another national championship and a world championship to add it to that. Oh, well, they need to hit. Boy, it, that thing is. It's a good thing well, you hit his I was going to say that, that, that had a lot that of was legs for the hack. <laughs> Well, the Dutch win that. Yeah, the last rock wasn't exactly pretty, but he managed to rub on his own and stick around. And that was the number one seeded, number one finishing team against the number eight team who've yeah. come through. So a bit, bit, big surprise there, mm -hmm. defeating Brewster. Big smiles all around. Back to our game, the Sweden are still struggling to set anything up. Oh. Nothing in the rings at this point. Brewster's just going to try to draw around this. Sweet, just top of the tee. Pan back and see again that guard's quite long, but. They got it into the position they wanted, a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. Ah, they had they had it from the Oh, no. Ah, they go on with it from They're going to try to pick this out. You can see the edge of the stone. And again, that guard is high, so. Oh. So what, eh? No, they're not. They're going to get on the board and then try and steal. Trying to come back with the steel. Yeah. It's easier to steal one than a two. So we've elected to take this point. So we already know what the first stones are going to be in the next end. Call up on the hold on. Call up. Oh holy on. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sweepers will just oh, oh, oh. keep this clean. Nice draw. Oh. Right to the button. Starberg. <laughs> <laughs> Skips yeah. want to do that. They want to practice that button draw because this one was an open draw, but the next one might be <laughs> <laughs> do or die with that same shot. And with that, Malberg forced to take one. The score is three to two for Fister after seven innings of play, and Fister has not only the lead but also advantage of the last rock going into the eighth end. And we're here at the Chompery Masters. And uh, two of the games finished already, as we can see here. A bit of a surprise win there. Van Dorp over Brewster. And uh, Edine making pretty short work of that young Swiss team, Staley, who were pretty happy to be in that quarterfinals. Edine, the number one seeded. The number two seeded team went out, didn't qualify. They were. Uh, the teams that were tied, but their LSD was not good enough. And that was Team Wallstadt, number two seeded in the tournament. So these are two really important stones for Johannes Potts. He's really got to get these two steel stones in position. You're going to want one just over the hog line and one just off the rings in direct line. This one's coming deep, so they're going to have to play the second one as well. Oh. Oh, nah, a little deeper than they would have well, wanted. Now, here we go. We're going to see yep. what they're made of with a tick shot here. This is one of the trickiest shots, but more and more part of the game. Able to pick this stone to the side. <coughs> if people aren't quite sure what's happening here, they're not allowed to remove this stone from play, but they can move it to the side. Sweepers are standing back. I think this is a little bit wide and heavy. Yeah, it's going to go straight past. So if they'd hit that stone, they wanted to take it right over to the side so it isn't even a corner guard, but not touch the side wall because the stone would be replaced if that's the case. Okay. Oh, 
Alltså samma fart som förra året stod New rules coming in for next season. The, double, the World Curling Federation has just voted on moving to a five stone rule, which means the first five stones out front can't be touched. From four at the moment. I've seen a couple of games this weekend where that may have uh, come in handy. <laughs> come in handy, yeah. <laughs> That's really going to change the game. It'll be interesting to see how the teams adjust to the tactics using that. That was not a good shot. No, he no. needed that to come around and some separation, both sitting on oh. the T line, or both sitting on the center line. Uh, they look like easy pickings later on. Yeah, the Swiss are going to ignore that and come into the rings, get themselves set up, and then clear away if they have to. Yeah, the five rock rule I've always been supportive of because it actually gives full advantage to the hammer team. At the moment, the non-hammer team get the first chance to hit, but now all advantage goes to the hammer team, so we should see hopefully higher scoring run, run, games, run, run, run. less blanks. Yep. People are so good at run backs now that one yep. extra guard out front will help with that. I think the biggest difference might also be if you have to steal yep. two, oh, oh. that yep. may... Yep. Well, steal will definitely be a little bit... Easier, maybe. Or doable. Back in the old yeah, days, uh, with only three stones yeah, rule, no. you we would turn into that the first. In Europe, probably, you'd say, well, back in Canada, I should say, we would watch curling on TV. It's a very popular TV sport there, and nobody would tune in for the first hour because when you clicked on, there was five zeros on the scoreboard. So we'd always wait till the back end of the game yeah. to tune in and these more stones being held out front yeah, without being able to remove them has made the game more aggressive, more scoring. The free guard zone rule, I think, internationally first came into effect in 1992. I believe Garmisch Worlds was the first year they were that was used. If I remember correctly. Somebody asked me that of the year at one of my junior players, and I looked it up, and now I've gone blank on it again. I think it was 92, and Vic Peters was the Canadian representative, and Connie Lauberg was the Canadian representative. It was in German. Shot, 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 shot. Somebody's working hard. <laughs> not quite sure what that was. <laughs> I think best to just gloss over that and not speculate. Moving straight along to the next shot. I was laughing with Johannes earlier. He traditionally wears bright red socks. They're his lucky charm. But I said I didn't even recognize him because his socks weren't red. Well, he's probably wishing he was wearing them now. Greg, Greg Drummond for five years wore lucky red socks until they walked away on their own. And he had to trade up. Another thing we really don't want to know about. <laughs> So they're going to try to clear up this front here. Yeah, if you mark it, he'll be... Yep. He's got to be careful he doesn't drag that center stone straight back. Hamner! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like that. Right. Coach's curse. <laughs> mark, mark Fister has to do that on purpose. <laughs> He's a little upset with that. If you called that as a run back, <laughs> you'd be as happy. <laughs> I always say to my players, I'll give you a million euros if you can do that again. Mark's a very animated player. Passionate, I think we'll follow that under. Okay, well. That's certainly, <laughs> they're going, where did that come from? Uh, what are we doing now? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't counting on this, we had a game plan, now what are we going to do? Yeah, we're sitting far too good, we go and mess it up. I think they could use a little bit closer guard, yeah. so maybe just one about halfway maybe. 
Well, they know the Swiss can play a 12-foot run back, <laughs> and they've just done it, so now they're going to have to do something to interfere with that being done on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I think that's okay. Down to last rock here, he has to steal. It's a freeze on. Beautiful control shot. He just yeah, but uh, Dermot's got a full four foot to draw to. To take a win in oh. that game. It's been a nice close game. Sitting 3-3. Last stone coming now, you can see just on the next sheet. Ross Patterson throws last stones for that team. Greg is the skip, but plays vice stones. There was a lot of chatter about yeah. There was a lot of chatter about that at the beginning of the season, but it's working really, really well yep, for them. Done okay. Yeah. More and more you see somebody else throwing the last stones, free the skip up to focus purely on the strategy and tactics of the game, without the pressure of those last two stones. Some teams thrive on it, other teams you get the skip playing the lead stones and then heading for the house and calling the rest of the end. That's extra pressure because if the lead stones aren't in the right place, <laughs> you've got nobody to look to but yourself. Well, Patterson put that right on the button, so yeah, definitely had no uh, no problem with the pressure in that shot. So that means Drummond's through to the semi-final. Huh? So does that work out that they play Van Dorp now? Is that how that pairing works up, I yep. think? Yeah, yep. and Van Dorp and uh, Edin will play the winner of the game we're covering here. Well, this wasn't part of the Swiss battle plan to be looking down at three stones sitting on top yep. of the forefoot. Well, Marky gets to play that raise takeout again and see yep. if he can improve on it. He's not going to take out his own anyways. Oh, it just opens it up. A little bit tight this time. Sent that over the top of the pack. The Swiss kind of dug themselves a hole here. Oh. The most dreaded words in all of curling is the same again. Because that's really hard oh. to do. So he played one by accident and then when oh. he was asked to play it, he was a little bit offline. Red is down one. Yellow has the hammer, but Mark's probably ordering the helicopter right now. Coach's drone might come in. <laughs> 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 it might do. <laughs> you drop it in from above. He's got no yellow rocks or nothing to work oh. out front with or anything yet. And all of those stones are top T. No way around behind. You got to go through them. You can't go around them. Younger brother, Mariko, being asked to. Yep. Oh. Yep. Save the team here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good attempt. Leaves his own rock out there, but uh, this is just such a new thing in the game where these teams are so confident at these long run backs. Go back a couple of years and they would be playing more of an angle to clear the front but now it's one of the first things they look at is this run back have a look at the angle something that we practice a lot it's become a big part of the ladies game as well and the junior ladies game Swiss, Swiss were one of the leaders in that the junior girls took on the game very aggressively and learned to play these big hits accuracy being more important than speed mm -hmm. Yeah. 
the ice is so fast now that you just need to Definitely make sure you're online oh, oh, to pop oh, it oh, out oh, the oh, back. Oh, so, okay, this is really important where they get the positioning on this. Another, another problem that's going to be occurring here is that all three sheets have completed now. There's only one sheet in play. That may change the draw weight a little bit, so I think they're going to have to be aware of that. As the, as the ice cools down very quickly here without all that activity on it, it might tighten it up a bit. So that card wasn't very good, I don't think. No, there wasn't in a very good position. No, it's left it way too long. He's there is a tricky draw down the left-hand side, but what he's trying to do is tidy this right-hand side up because it's more open, gives them more, well, you might more be able space to, get in, to draw. Get in here and get into shot position. That's Enrico Fister. Yep. Yeah. It's just a very nice controlled weight coming down here. That's going to curl a bit. Yeah, the sweepers are stepping back. They're waiting for it to move. That's just going to hit and roll away if it hits Whoa. at all. Well, Big miss. Well, the Swiss are just kind of falling miss. apart in this end. Just shows you that long accidental run back and now a miss here. Sweden have really been up against it all game and now a big chance here. Four stones left to come. Yeah, that's terrible. That was exactly the same shot that put them out of Basel two weeks ago against Van Dorp. They had a hit to play at that exact weight and he missed it by exactly the same distance. Handed the steal to Van Dorp and they were out and Van Dorp went through to the playoffs. Well, certainly... Malbergs has an opportunity to put that guard in a far better position now. Yellow has the hammer. And, uh, what the Sweden are going to do is try to spread these guards out to push the Swiss draw stone if they have to draw it out as far as they can. Cut the scoring zone down to the smallest margin. Malberg needs to steal one to tie. Team Adina are all out of the changing room and sitting by the side watching these last four stones come down deciding who they'll yeah, play yeah, against. Well, again, I think that's a little bit tight. Yeah, they too long. I think Mark can get in here now. Yeah, I think they would have wanted that a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. As you say, Armin, the conditions change quickly when the arena empties out. So that might have just been a little bit slower than they were thinking. Well, he knows what a stone at that weight is going to do now, down that exact same shot. So there'll be a little adjustment. I think Tommy's got a couple of hairs less again. He does, he's looking down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, little shake of the head. <laughs> well, I think that pretty much says it oh, all. Oh yeah, Something yeah. tells me that was the last fresh. That was nasty <laughs> from our camera crew there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody will point that out to Tommy later on YouTube. Mark Fister, big shot here for him. He knows what he needs to do now. Take a little bit of weight. Is that the same ice they gave last time? Is he throwing a little bit less at this? I think he's just coming down with four foot, back four foot. Yeah, play, play 
Got a swing. Sweepers are stemming back. They're waiting for it to move. Now it's going. So yeah, here it comes go. now. They roll open. Oh, Leave Sweden still makes shot. Makes it even worse. Yep. It's going to hit and roll here and try to lock up this button. Leave no scoring options. Ideally, they want to sit right on top of that red one. That's that ice cooling down. It straightens yeah, it up a bit too. That'll happen. As the ice cools down, it'll. And that may be just just the difference there. They're talking about whether they, depending on how they hit this, they roll on top. If they accidentally bump it, they're still going to leave their stone on the the button. Mark may not even have a shot mm. with his last one. If they can get the roll and lock this tried on top of the button, there's no way in. There's no way to shoulder. The stone and move them both back. So they're going to take a big ice. They're going to throw big weight at this. I think they don't want the risk of it over curling. Well, this will be a big turnaround if Sweden manages to walk away with this win because they've been on the back foot for seven ends. But I'll tell you, one or two shots turn the lock, especially in this last end. We would would have expected front guards and being peeled and front guards and being peeled and it's just not worked out that way with that one shot. Yep. So oh. Here it comes. Yep. Yep. Whoa. 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 Sweepers ah. will be on Whoa. top of this Whoa. to try to get the perfect line. We can. Go, go, go. Hmm. We may have just given the fister and out. Yeah, he's given them enough to come around control way. Uh, that that's awfully tight on the pin. This is going to be a tough shot. I don't know if he can roll that and get shot out of this, because well, I think he's going to sit high on the pin. I think yeah, with the situation the way it was, he'll be happy if he gets an extra end. Yeah. I think that's going to be their best option now. That was so close. Another foot roll, and that would have been probably game over. So it's a it tiny bit wide. Fister gets down to this and cuts him down to one. He's got to be pretty happy that he can get into an extra. He's got to be careful with this that he doesn't overthrow it and just push them over for the game or come tight and catch a guard. I think he's taking enough ice that he's going to throw oh enough weight at that. He's going to be clear of the it's guard. A little, little less than what he had. But you don't want this to dig in and over curl because even with weight you can swing across pretty quickly and rub on a top guard. Mark Fister, last rock here in the eighth looking at uh, three Swedish counters all covered. Needs to get in there to... Big danger here is overthrowing it, hitting on the outside and leaving. Here it comes now. What was oh. I saying about over curling and catching the top guard? Well, Been there, done that. Deal of three for the Swedes and they come back in the last two ends to take control and win this game. And they are through to the semi-finals. So that'll be a Sweden-Sweden matchup. Sweden-Sweden in that semi-final and we'll have Van Dorp then uh, Dutch playing against Drummond from Scotland. Hope you enjoyed this coverage. Thanks a lot. You're very Brad. welcome. Appreciate Pleasure to be here again. And we will be back at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning here with the Champre Masters World Curling Tour coverage. And we hope to uh, hope to have and be able to invite you back. It's been a great game here. Hope you enjoyed that. And we wish everybody a good evening or a good day wherever you are. And uh, come back tomorrow. Have a good night.